Hi there and thanks for joining me. So since I did a couple of videos on needle felting, I've been approached by some people who've said they've tried needle felting but they're really struggling to get started with it. So today I thought I'd do a beginner's guide to needle felting. So as you can see, I've been joined by some of my needle felting friends here <laughs> on the very small. So we've got a small hippo here based on an Egyptian hippo. You'll find in some of the museums, he's usually known as William and he's got these lovely lotus flower decorations on him. So the very large where we've got a life-size hair. Now the hair and the fox are actually my design. They're designed by a lady called Ems Fountain Felts and she runs online tutorials and she's very good. But most of the things you'll see in front of me here are my own design. So I designed the queen, made her for a competition I was entering. And then we've got uh, cat goddess, Egyptian cat goddess bast as well. As you can see, I'm a bit of an Egyptian fan. <laughs> uh, an Easter bunny. And uh, a badger, some sheep, <laughs> and a dragon. We've even got like a little toadstool house here as well, which I've put on a base to give it more of a sort of scene theme to it. Now, one of the things to remember with needle folding is it's not a quick process. When I first started, I heard people say that they can make something like this in 30 minutes. Maybe they can, but I've certainly never managed to, and I've been felting for eight years. <laughs> now, I don't actually time my makes, but I would estimate that something like this would probably take six, seven hours to make. It's quite a slow process, so you're not going to make something like that in half an hour. Now, I remember when I made these mice years ago i did actually time how long they took and i'm pretty sure that this little tiny mouse by the time i made the body and the ears and the little flower and the tail and put the eyes in and the whiskers i think if i remember rightly even a little mouse like that took about an hour and a half to two hours to make so it's quite a slow process but it's also an incredibly therapeutic process too so you can sit there with your wool looks like this and then you just stab away with your needle and then from wool that looks like this like it's come off a sheep you then create things like this or the rabbit or any of the items that you see here most of these will have been made using wool as what's called core where you make the item out of white wool and then you put a color over the top to give it its features there's a few exceptions to that. I would have made the monkey not using full wool. He came from a kit really early on from the works and he's made just using the colored wool that you see here. But he doesn't have much structure to him. So the sort of wool he's made out of doesn't actually have much structure. So he's great for hanging, but he couldn't stand up in a million years. So I'll move on to the different types of wool in just a second. But as you can see, everything takes quite a while to make. I reckon the queen here, she probably took a good 40, 50 hours to make, but especially by the time I put all the beads and what have you on her. She has a little bit of metal in her as well for the body and the arms just to give her a little bit of structure, but she stands on the wall. So the dress is just made of wool. There's no metal in that. So she stands on the dress. So this dress is given her the structure that she needs in order to stand up. Same with the sheep, their feet, there's no metal in any of these items. So their feet are giving her the structure to stand up. So what you want to do is you want to get this wall as firm as you possibly can so it can stand on the feet. Now, if you bought a kit, the chances are it comes with a type of wool called merino wool or something similar to merino. Now, merino is a lovely soft type of wool. It comes off from the merino sheep. But it's really silky and it's really soft and it's incredibly difficult to make structural items out of the wool. It tends to be the wool that comes in all a variety of different colours. Here's just some green wool that I've got here. And it tends to have a very long staple length to the fibres. So if we pull this apart, you can see that the fibres are incredibly long fibres here. And they're all carded, so they're all in the same direction. And then that's very difficult to get all those fibres to bond together, basically with needle felting. 
you want all those fibers to bond together to become structurally sound but that's very difficult when they're all long staple lengths like that and also it's a very soft wool so imagine if you've got really dry brittle hair <laughs> that's almost the sort of wool that you're going to want to make structures out of this is really soft and silky so imagine models beautiful silky long hair this is more like a model's hair say beautiful for top coats but not so good for structural items for structural items you're going to want something a bit coarser you can see here the fibers they haven't been carded so they're worn in one length they're just all higgledy piggledy together and that's kind of what you want for needle folding you want all that fibers all muddled together so basically when you needle felt you're pulling all the fibers through into each other and you want the more to be muddled up so already they're already almost bonded together a little bit and they're also a bit coarser so something like this is coarser wool so it feels like your hair just basically needs a lot of conditioning <laughs> and that's what you want for needle felting because this will give you the structure you need to make items like this that can stand without any metal inside them if you try and make a structural item out of merino wool it's gonna not really go very far I mean, something like these little hippos, they were made out of Coriadel wool, which is not quite as soft as Merino, but it's almost as soft. And that's as big as I could make the little feet before they started losing their structural integrity. So it's well worth investing in some different wool. Now, this is just called Core Wool. And I buy my wool from a company called Wooled of Wool in the UK. It depends where you are in the world, obviously. And they just class this as core wool, C-O-R-E. So it's the wool that you use inside the core of all the items that you're making. Now, they don't actually specify what sheep this wool comes off of. I guess it depends what um, breed they can buy at any one time. But this is core wool and it's ideal for structurally making items. What I'm going to do now is I should put all these little characters away for the time being. And I'll get my mat out and we'll start making a very basic shape so you can see how it bonds together once we get the needle into it. So I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so I've cleared my furry friends away and I've now just got my mat and my trusty cup of tea. <laughs> Anyone who's watched my previous videos will know that I like my tea. Now on my mat, I've got my needle felt in needle. Now at the end of the needle are little metal barbs, little sticky out bits of metal that catch the wool fibres. Now hopefully when I hold the needle up to the camera you can see those barbs glinting in the light and then when you get your wool and it's these barbs that catch on the wool fibers so when you put your needle in these barbs are catching the furthest away bits of wool and then dragging it through to the closer bits and then it becomes really matted and really firm so it's a bit like your hair gets really matted and it becomes quite a lump in your head doesn't it same sort of idea with this is sort of matting the wool fibers together but obviously it takes a long time because you've got to pull the fibers through and that's what you're doing with needle folding you're pulling the fibers through so they all bond together and that's why it's easy to do it with wool that looks more like this where all the fibers are muddly puddled together muddly puddled what word's that <laughs> Oh, muddled together rather than something like merino wool, which is beautiful and soft, where the fibres are all going in the same direction. You see all the fibres there are going in the same direction as each other. So that's much harder to get that to bond together to become a structural item. Ideal if you're doing 2D felting or anything like that, if you just want it for decoration on the top, but not so good if you're structurally trying to make something. And merino wool comes in lots of lovely colours. I've just got green here. We've also got some sort of beigey, purpley colour. I mean, I've got loads, literally loads of different colours. Some minty colour, a bit of red, yellow, uh, pink, <laughs> and black. And these are just some of the colours I've got out on my table today. It comes with basically any colour under the sun you can buy in wool. But say most of the colours are merino wool, which is that lovely soft wool. What we'll do today is we're just going to start off by making a very simple shape and then we'll 
talk about how I'm going to do that and the techniques to do that. We're just going to make a ball initially and then see where we go with that ball. Okay, so first of all, you just get a lump of wool. Now, obviously, the more wool you get, your bigger your ball. So you get a lot of wool. By the time that you can sort of almost like put it in your hands really hard like this. And that gives you an idea as to what sort of size ball it's going to become if you squeeze it all together. Now, I don't want this video to last hours because it's supposed to be a beginner's video. So I'm just going to get a smallish amount of wool and we will start felting that. So first of all, I'm going to want to just fold the wool into a rough ball shape. Just saves a little bit of time because already it's almost a ball shape like so. And then get my needle folding needle and then just push the needle through the wool. Now you don't need to go into the mat that much. You're just literally trying to bond the wool fibers together. So you're dragging the barbs on the needle are dragging all the wool fibers into each other and firming them up. And you just do this lots and lots and lots and lots of times. <laughs> Now, obviously, the needles are sharp, so if you catch your fingers, chances are you will stab yourself. So you do have to be careful and you do have to watch what you're doing when you're needle folding. And you're going to also want to move all around as you go. So we've already, see just those few stabs there, we've already got that side. So it's staying firm together, isn't it? So it's no longer opening up anymore. And we'll do the same on the other side. You can get faster. So initially I was doing slow stabbing, but you can get faster as you get used to it. You do get multi-needle holders that you can use as well. So you can be using sort of a three, I think the most I've seen is a four needle holder. So obviously if you had a four needle holder, you would have four needles going into the wall at any one time. Anything with it is you do have to be careful with your fingers because it's really easy to stab your fingers with the multi-holders. I'm just going to use one needle today because if you've bought a kit or something, the chances are it's just come with the one needle. So just use the one needle, it's fine. Obviously, if you've got multi needle holders, they take a little bit less time to do something. But also, they can flatten out your pieces a bit as well because you've got more pressure. You've got the four needles or three needles or whatever putting pressure on your piece rather than just the one needle. And you just sit there. And you just stab the wall now constantly moving it around as well because we're going to want this to be sort of almost not quite ball shape but almost ball shape Bye -bye. have a nice day see you later you. bye See, I'm just turning the ball all the time while I stab it. And already it's firming up quite nicely. We've got some loose fibres on the top, but it's becoming quite ball shaped, isn't it? The other thing you can do with something like this is you can actually roll it between your hands to turn it into a ball. So you just get the ball between your hands and just roll it. And the agitation from your hands into the fibres will just gradually bond it into a ball shape. I'll just stab a little bit more. So constantly moving it around, so I'm constantly moving, trying to get my fingers out of the way of the needle. <laughs> so it's really easy to stab yourself, you get used to it after a while. Basically, I want it all to become like the same amount of firmness throughout the whole of the ball. You can almost see we've got some bits like here that haven't really been stabbed in at all. Well, there's other bits are much firmer, so we just want to go through and make it all standardised. So it will take a little bit of time. So it's a great hobby. You can just sit there and you can zone out and stop worrying about your worries in the world, or you can 
think about other things or watch a bit of TV. Obviously, be careful, don't stab yourself when you're watching TV. <laughs> but I do find it an absolutely wonderful hobby for just zoning out, really. I just sit there with my wool and my needle. On. And, you know, you just let your mind wander and sometimes you come up with wonderful things that you think you might make next time. Uh, sometimes your mind just goes blank. <laughs> but sometimes it's a word of good as well sometimes, isn't it? And yeah, I do love it. It's a wonderful hobby and it's well worth persevering with. It really is. So it can be tricky to get started with it just because it's not easy. You know, it's a little bit like pottery. I'm not saying it's the same as pottery. I mean, pottery, you've got to worry about, you know, putting all the glazes on and how the clay is going to cope with the firing and the temperature of the kiln and all those other really complicated things. I'm not saying it's as uh, like pottery, but it's a little bit similar, like how you would sculpt the clay. You wouldn't go into a, uh, a potter's studio and get a bit of clay and think that you can become a masterpiece clayer in an afternoon. It takes a long time to learn how to sculpt the clay. And equally, it takes a long time to learn how to sculpt the wool. But you can have so much fun along the way. I mean, I've just showed you some of the items that I've made on my needle felting journey. I mean, I haven't got a lot of the items that I've made because they've been given away over the years, to be honest. I mean, I don't sell my, my items. I just do it for fun. But I give them away. I give them to friends and family. Donate them to things and what have you. So I've just showed you a little selection of some of the things that I made today. Obviously, they make wonderful gifts. And if you've got the sort of family that like handmade items, the world is really your imagination. You can make reefs, you can make animals, you can make people, uh, you can make badges, Easter decorations. Obviously, Christmas is just <laughs> so many wonderful things you can make at Christmas. You know, you never have to buy a Christmas decoration again, do you? <laughs> uh, it's a lovely hobby, it really is. The thing you do have to be a little bit careful with is like clothes moths. Clothes moths love wool and needle felt in wool sometimes can have a little bit of a sheep smell still to it because it's obviously been washed but it hasn't been massively treated some of it and sometimes you have a bit of a sheep smell to it and the clothes moths love that sort of wool so do be careful of your makes do make sure that you protect them from clothes moths i used to live near the seaside and Close moths never really played me any trouble at all down there, so I just leave them in the house and not worry about them. Never had any problems at all. Moved to the countryside, <laughs> and cloves moths are a nightmare here, and they went into so many of my items. I literally had to put them all in the freezer, I had to treat them all with cloves moths <laughs> spray, <laughs> I had to take some of them apart to get rid of all the eggs in them and then remake them. <laughs> it's such a nightmare, so do, do be careful. Learn from my mistake. <laughs> There we go, we're almost circular shape now, aren't we? Can you see? It's a little bit lumpy in places, so we'll carry on with it for a bit, but we're almost getting there. Just want it to be a little bit more consistent than that. We haven't been at it that long, have we? And already we've got a ball, which is quite nice. I might give it a little roll in my hands. There's no firm or fast rule to need a felting, so if you fancy giving it a roll, just give it a roll. You know, there's no like rules like roll it here, roll it there, or anything like that. You know, if you just think, oh, I want it to firm up a bit more, just give it a roll. You could do it sort of that way. If you wanted to make it into a cylinder, um, it's quite handy if you're making legs to roll it that way. But I want this to be like a head, so I want it to be more of a circular shape. And then we'll just carry on bolting it down. Now, if you've tried needle folding, one of the things you might have come across is all the different types of needles that you get. Now, if you've bought a kit and it comes with one needle, just use that one needle. It will be fine, honestly. Um, I don't wish to offend anybody, but people can get too het up over <laughs> what type of needle to use. You get all different types. I've got some here. So basically every single colour that you see in here, the lady I buy them off with actually colour coordinates all the needles. Every single colour that you see in here is a different type of needle. 
and you can use them for different different things some of them will be coarser some of them will be finer the little gold ones for instance are really good for finishing off because they're really fine but to be honest if you're starting off a needle folding don't worry too much about all the different needles just use the one that comes in your kit it will be fine honestly as you advance you can then worry about uh, the different types of needles that you get to be honest i've been saying i've been felting for eight years and most of the time i buy the red needles <laughs> So much so, I buy the red needles and I just buy a whole pack of red needles now. And I very rarely use my coloured, my other coloured needles. It's just always red that I like to use. So if I was finishing off and I wanted something to be a little bit more delicate and uh, have a nice finish, I would use the gold one to finish off. And if I was using something that I wanted to be fluffy, you get what's called a reverse needle, where it actually does the opposite of bonding the fibres together. It pulls the fibres out. So it makes like a fluffy chick or something like that. And I would use the reverse felting needle. But most of the others, I don't really worry about. I just like my red needles <laughs> and my, my finer ones for finishing off. So don't worry. If you've just been given one of your kit, it will be fine. Honestly, just use that one. Now, when you'll be felting a lot as well, one of the things that can happen is your needle can actually blunt. So the barbs on the end of it can blunt. As it goes through the wool fibres, I guess they gradually smooth down. Again, that happens after a long, long time of using a needle. So if you've been given a kit, again, I wouldn't worry too much about that. It's unlikely that that's the problem as to why you're struggling with needle felting. It's more likely that you just want to give it a bit of time and a bit of practice. And it might just be that the sort of wool you've been given in your kit. So if you can get to a wool supplier anywhere near you, somewhere that sells different types of wool, um, or even go to like a farm day and <laughs> stroke different types of breeds of sheep or anything like that. It's well worth doing so because it's very difficult to explain on a video the how these wools feel differently in real life. But they are very different. And if you can just go and grab some wool and feel it between your fingers, you'll see all the difference. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Shame we can't quite get to the stage where you've got like VR headsets where you can feel things, isn't it? <laughs> Right, okay. So I'd say that's getting pretty circular shape, isn't it? I say that and then I carry on stabbing. That's the way needle felting is. <laughs> you can carry on stabbing forever, can't you? Right, okay. I'm going to call that done for this particular scenario. So that's as good a circle as I needed to get it for now. Now, obviously, you can carry on with that a bit longer if you wanted to, if you were doing it at home, but I'm not going to because I don't want the video to go on for hours because people get bored <laughs> so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to make some little ears for this this piece so i should get some more of my white wool and i'm just going to fold the white wool in two like that so already it becomes a bit of an ear shape doesn't it so imagine that on there it's a bit of an ear shape i mean obviously it's a very large ear because it hasn't been bonded down and then i'm just going to get my needle and I'm just going to stab that into that to make it more of an ear shape. Now you can hear probably the difference in the noise now is because I'm doing a thin piece, the needle was going into the foam more. When I was doing the big ball, the needle was barely going into the foam. Now because I'm doing a thin piece, it's going into the foam more. So what you're going to want to do with this is you're going to want to pick it up of the foam on a regular basis. Otherwise, it would just bond into the foam fibres and it was just make it sort of harder to to form really so as you can see i'm using my fingers just to encourage the wool into like an ear shape don't worry about the fact it's too large at the moment we'll make it smaller in a bit we want to say pick it up off the mat regularly and just felt it so it becomes a nice firm ear now, I'm not going to worry about what's going on at this part of the year at the moment, because what I want to do is I want to leave these long fibres here, because this is going to become an ear. And I want to leave these long fibres, so by leaving these long fibres, it then becomes very easy to attach the ear onto the back of the head. If I was to fold these fibres in, you've then got sharp or a hard surface there flat surface to attach the ear, which you can do, but it's just easier if you leave the fibres nice and long there. 
So I'm not going to worry about what's going on in my fingers. I'm going to leave those fibers there and I'm just going to felt this top of the ear here. Now it's becoming quite nice and firm. I'll just go over to turn it over and do the back for a little bit. Obviously, I don't want to push too far in because if I push too far in, all I'm going to do is push these fibers on this side of the ear into the mat on that side of the ear. So I want to just do it so fairly, it's barely hitting the foam, really. Okay, so now that is still a little bit large. What I'm going to do is I should put it on its side. And then I should start felting it on its side to make it into a smaller shape. Now, obviously, this is tricky because it's really close to your fingers <laughs> and it's very easy to catch your fingers when you're doing something like this. So what you can do is you can get a bit of card and hold the wall between the pieces of card and then use your needle in between there and then the card protects your fingers. You also can get leather needle felting finger protectors. I've got some here. Mine don't actually match. I've lost the corresponding pair to each. <laughs> and then you put them on your fingers and then they would then protect your fingers against the needle like that. And when you're using your leather uh, finger protectors, because they're hard, it's actually really easy to bend a needle on them. So you do have to be careful. Although it protects your fingers, you can very easily bend or break a needle. I'm just going to put my needle, uh, my finger protectors to one side though. And I should just use my fingers for now because I don't want to block any of the view as we're doing a video here. And I'll try not to stab myself because I don't think you want to see that on camera, do you? <laughs> so yeah, so I'm just uh, turning the ear around and felting the edges of it. So it all felts in and becomes more of an ear shape. Then I want to felt it down the bottom a little bit more. So I've got the end of the ear there. Again, leaving the fibres loose, so I won't worry about them. Until you get it to a shape that you want it to be. And obviously the more you felt it, the smaller it becomes. And the thicker it will become as well, because you're getting more wall into a smaller area. If you get too much and you think it's too thick, you can always just pull a bit off the back. It's quite forgiving. It really is. You can always add more as well. If you find it's too thin, you can add a little bit more and felt it in. It's a very, very forgiving hobby, to be honest. And like this one, it's got a bit elongated shape, really, hasn't it? I don't want it that shape. I want it more of a round shape. So I'm going to just pull it. So you literally just grab the wall and pull it out to the shape you want it to be. And then just carry on felting. So you can use your fingers quite a lot to sculpt it. You're sort of pulling and pushing and prodding a bit. And I shall offer it up to my little character and see if we think that is not a bad shape for an ear. It's getting there, isn't it? There you go. Hopefully you can see how easy it is just to make a little ear for something. So, my face looks a little bit thick in comparison to the ear, so I'm just going to flatten this off a little bit. Again, it's very forgiving. You know, I sort of said I'd leave the ball there and I've decided I don't like it. It's a bit too big, so I'm going to carry on folding it down for a little bit. So it's a very forgiving hobby. If you do something you think, oh, I don't like that, you could, even at this stage, you could actually pull some of the wool off. It's tricky because it's all bonded in there, but you still can if you want to. You can cut bits off. Um, you can add more to it if you wanted to. It's actually quite a forgiving hobby.
I don't know about you, and I don't know how it sounds like on the camera, but I do like the crunch sound of a needle into wool. I think it's a lovely sound. <laughs> And when you put your needle on into the wool, you want to do it as straight as possible as well. You don't want to be bending it while it's in the wool. You want to go straight in, straight out, that thing. If you bend it while it's in the wool, that's when you're more likely to break your needle. Again, if you're starting out and you might have been reading that some people never break needles. I don't know. I break loads of needles. <laughs> um, Maybe people felt differently. I know a lot of people do 2D felting and I, it's harder to break a needle if you're 2D felting. Like they do like landscape pictures and that sort of thing, felting. Um, but yes, I, I, I regularly break needles. So don't worry about it. If you break a needle, you'll just need to get a new one <laughs> and start again. If you break your needle in your piece, you do have to be a little bit careful. But obviously it depends what you're doing with that piece. If you want to give that piece to a child, which I wouldn't recommend with needle felting because it's not really designed for children, you won't want to leave a broken needle in it. Um, if you want to sell it, again, I definitely wouldn't recommend le leaving a broken needle in it. But if you're just using it for yourself and you're confident the broken needle is right inside the piece, you can't feel it anywhere, there's no point tearing your piece to pieces to bond it. Just leave the broken needle in there. It won't really do much harm. They're not really designed as toys for children or toys for dogs or anything like that. Just sort of ornamental pieces, really. Some of the dogs, you know, all the fibres in the wool could then cause, if they would swallow it or anything, it would cause clogging in their stomachs. So it could be quite dangerous for them. But if you keep your needle nice and straight and just go straight in, straight out, I'm over-exaggerating it here, don't get me wrong, but if you go straight in, straight out, you should be less likely to break a needle. So if you wear the finger protectors, it's quite easy to break a needle on those because they're hard. And to be honest, if you catch your finger, especially your nail or something, <laughs> you probably break a needle on them as well. It's either like you'll stab yourself, but yeah, hopefully you won't stab yourself too badly. See here, I've got some ridges still where the wall is shown through and I don't want those ridges. So I'm just going to rub my finger over those fibres to try and hide away those ridges. Because this is going to become a face, basically. So, well, it's going to have eyes and a little nose on it. I want to hide those ridges. So I'm just going to use my finger to rough up those ridges because they aren't going away very easily with needle felting. And sometimes you end up with stray bits of different colour in the wool. And that hopefully will just cover it up. If it doesn't cover it up, what you can do is you just get a little tiny bit of your other wool. And I'm just tearing it up so it becomes sort of smaller pieces they less likely to have um, long strands in it and then you can just place it over the top as well and that will just cover up any of those lines that you see on the front of it You see, I'm moving it around all the time. You don't really want to keep it still. You sort of want to be moving it around to make sure you've bonded all these fibres in, so all parts of the head. There you go. You can see they're less less obvious now. I had those lines coming across where the original wall had left like furrows where we'd sort of bonded it over to begin with. And I didn't like those because it was going to be a face. So I've just covered them up. You see them clear on the back, perhaps. I don't mind too much from the back, because we're not going to be looking at the back so much. So that's a bit better. And let's try the ear and see, are we happy with that ear? I think the ear looks okay in proportion to the head, doesn't it? So I'm going to put the ear to one side while I say that. I'm going to give this ear a few more stabs. <laughs> and I'm going to put it to one side. I'm really good at that. Put it to one side. Oh, let me just stab it a bit more. <laughs> And then I'm going to make the other ear now, so I'll get some more of the wool and pull off a bit. And again, I'm going to fold the wool over so it becomes an ear shape. Got a bit more than I had last time, I think. Just going to fold the wool over so it becomes an ear shape. 
and then starts fibers nice and long down the back and they'll go on the back of the head and attach the ear onto the back of the head and we're just felting the ear into place moving it off its mat on a regular basis so it doesn't get too bonded in you can see already it's becoming ear shaped isn't it doesn't take long really it seems like it's taking ages but it's not too bad is it and again i should move on to its side and i should do the sides oh i didn't do the back actually you see the back's really fluffy can you see in the camera how back fluffy the back is so what we'll do is we'll do the back So, so you can do the back and you don't want it to go too far into the mat or you can actually hold it on its side almost to felt those fibres into the back. And then we put it on its side and you want to felt those fibres into the side and the top as well, get them all in there. All bonded in there nicely watching out for our fingers so you can use your leather protectors at this point your finger protectors or a little bit of card or just watch where your needles going now, I wouldn't recommend using multi-needle tools when you're doing delicate things like ears it's just too easy to stab your fingers really and this ears getting a bit funny shape so I'm just going to pull it out again like I did with the other one you can see it's actually much thicker i've used a lot more wool on that side so i could either pull some wool off this ear so you would just pull some off the back but to be honest i think this actually is going to look better because it's actually thicker than this one quite considerably so so what i'll probably do is i'll make this one and then i'll add a little bit more wool to that one because i was thinking that looks a little bit thin and then i'll add a bit more wool to that one to make them look like they're a pair Now today I'm only going to make the head today. I'm not going to make any body or anything like that because it takes a long time to make these things. And it's supposed to be just a very straightforward little video. But if you wanted to make the body, you would just get some more wool. And you would make a body to go onto the head. And again, the same idea, you would make it. But if you wanted a ball body, make it into a ball again and make a bigger ball for the head to go onto. If you want an oblong shape, make an oblong shape. And that's how you would then make the body. And then the arms and legs. Now, I have already got a video on my channel showing how I made an Easter bunny. Uh, it's got a white Easter bunny with a basket full of eggs. So maybe it's worth watching that one as well, because that shows how I made the body and how I made the legs and the arms for that. Now I'm just pulling the ear out again like I did before. Sorry, I forget to talk <laughs> through what I'm actually doing here sometimes. <laughs> Okay, and offer that to the head. Now, actually, I think this ear looks better than this ear because this is a bit thin, isn't it, from the size of the head? Whereas that actually is better. You might be able to see what sort of character this is going to become now as well, won't you? <laughs> so, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a bit more wool to this one. Rather than make this one thinner, I'm going to add more to that one. So, there's a little bit of a lump on the top there, so I'm just going to take that out. There we are. And I shall, oh, they do get stuck to you sometimes, get a little bit more wool onto this ear. I don't think I need too much. So I'm going to get this little bit of wool and I'm going to make it so it's roughly the same shape as the ear. And I'm just going to felt it on top of the ear like this. And get faster and faster and faster. <laughs> you have to be careful where you go fast. 
that you don't bend your knee on because I nearly did then. <laughs> so I'm being a bit silly, really, but maybe do as I say, don't do as I do. <laughs> That's what your parents always say to you, isn't it? So yes, it's getting thicker, isn't it? Almost as thick as the other one. Maybe a little bit thin still, so I'll just get a little bit more wool. And again, roughly the same size as the ear, and just felt it over the top. So it's very forgiving. If you don't add enough wool, just add a bit more. If you've added too much, then just take a bit away. It's very, very forgiving hobby. Pull it out because it's losing its little round shape a bit. And we'll offer it up to the head. Aha! That's not too bad. Now, again, you could felt this for ages so they became nice and smooth so you get rid of all these fibres in there. Now, I'm not going to worry too much about that because I'm doing a video. I don't want it to go on for too long because I think people get bored. <laughs> So I'm going to leave it a little bit like it is. I will just sort the shape out of that one. It's not quite the shape, same shape as the other ear, and I prefer the other ear shape. So I'm just going to felt that one into more of a circular shape. I don't think they're too bad a size, are they? So now obviously with ears, they tend to have a little bit of pink inside them, don't they? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit of pink wool. And I've just torn off a small amount of pink wool. And I'm just going to roll it very gently between my fingers. So it becomes almost the shape that I want to use inside the ear. And then hold it into place and then very gently felt the pink onto the white wool. This is what I mean when I say, you know, if you were doing using this wool as core wool and then putting coloured on the top, this is the same sort of technique as you'd use to do that. So the colour, it's not structural or anything like that, you're just literally using the colour to give a bit of detail to the piece. So you don't want your needle going in too far, you don't want to push the pink all the way into the mat. Ideally, you just want the pink to show on this side of the ear and not out the back at all. That's quite tricky, quite often it still goes through to the back. <laughs> so just do it very gently. So it just bonds into the ear. Now I'd like the pink to go up a little bit higher, so I'm just going to grab a little bit more. And this time I'm going to make it into a, more of a crescent moon shape because I want it to come up here a little bit higher on the ear. And then I'm just going to use my needle to pop it into shape. So, where I want it to go. And I'll just very gently, very carefully help that into shape. Up that onto the ear, rather. Now you can use your needle very gently to pull the wall where you want it to be. Now, you do have to be careful doing this, it's really easy to bend a needle doing this. If you do it very carefully and you don't force the needle at all, you can actually use it to sort of prise the wall where you want it to be. And there we go, we've got a little bit of pink inside the ear. So I'm not going to go all the way down here because this bit's going to be attached to the head. Like that. So you won't even see this bit that goes too far down, okay? Again, I'm going to get a little bit of pink wool. And I'm just going to rub that very gently between my fingers so it's roughly the shape I want it to be to go on the ear. And then use the same needle. I'm not changing my needle at all, I'm just using the same one. Very gently put that pink on the ear, like so. We get a little bit more. Same as the idea as last time, it didn't quite go up high enough. So I'm going to crescent moon. Shape it along the top of the ear and then gradually just felt up down like that. Again, it's a little bit not quite enough at the bottom. 
I should grab a little bit more and just pop it at the bottom like that. And again, you know, I'm very gentle and I'm barely going through. I just want to bond the pink wool into the white. I don't want to ideally go through the back and see slightly that some of the pink fibres have come through when I push a little bit hard, but most haven't, so that's not too bad. Now, if you were being fussy and you wanted to hide these pink on the back, you could then add a little bit of white wool onto the back to hide the pink as well if you wanted to. I'm not going to worry too much about that, but I am just going to felt down the back of the ear. I'm holding it at angle, so rather than go like that, which I risk putting white through the pink, and I don't want to do that, I'm just going to hold it at an angle and use the needle on it to sort of ties those fibres into the back of the ear a little bit. And then I'm just going to use my fingers to shake the ear a bit as well, like that. Okay. Do the same with this ear, so I'm just using the needle on its side. Well, I'm putting the ear on its side and then using the needle to entice those fibres into the back of the ear. Say so some of the pink come through, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. Say so if you wanted to, you could put a little bit of white wool over that to hide it. So you would have to be careful because you don't want the white coming through to this side. Otherwise, you can end up going around around in circles. <laughs> and then, again, I'm just going to shape the ear by pulling it between my fingers. Give it a bit of a shape, my fingers. Look at the two ears side by side, see if do I think they're okay. They're not too bad. And then I shall offer them up to the head. Remember which side my head is, I think it's this side. And then what you can do is you can then use needles. You might see I've got some normal sort of sewing, oh sorry, sewing pins here, rather not needles, sorry. And then just pop the ears onto the head and see what they're going to look like. Oh, see where you put your ears on a piece can change the look of the piece quite a lot. So if you were to put your ears round the side, so you get a completely different look <laughs> to if you were to put your ears on the top. Well, that's probably more like a bunny look, isn't it? <laughs> a bit uneven, but you know, you get the, I'm sure you get the gist. It's like more of a bunny look. Now, as you might have guessed, we're going for a mouse here, yeah, just a mouse's head. So I should probably put my ears, oh, nowhere near like that. That one's completely off. Sort of a little bit off the side, but not as much as the first one. So it's sort of more like this, I think. What I should do, you can use the pins to decide where you want your ears. And then what I'm going to do is I should just felt them very gently, very loosely into place. Now by use, leaving these long fibres at the back, remember we left the long fibres at the back of the ears, it just makes it really easy. You use these long fibres just to felt it into the back of the head, which is ideal. If you had that hard, it doesn't matter, you can do it hard. But then you would need to use a bit of wool to connect that hard ridge there to the back of the head. Otherwise, it'd always be a little bit loose. And it's just easier to leave the fibres long. Like when you're doing legs and arms as well, it's really handy to leave them long. It's just a nice technique to attach things to like the main torso. Again, when you're making the head, you can even do that. You can leave the fibres long of the head, attach it to the torso too. I'll just take that ear off for now while I attach this one. Check it from the front as well, make sure you're happy of how it's going. Watch out for the needle. Oh, I keep calling it a needle, don't I? <laughs> Watch out for the pin. <laughs> what am I all about? Watch out for the pin when you're doing this because you don't want to stab that inadvertently. I think my ear was getting a little bit lost there, so I'm just going to pull it up a bit more. And until you bond it on firmly, you've got quite a bit of give, really. I'm just going to fold in those long fibres that we left down the back of the head.
Right, and then when I look at the other ear, I can decide where I want that other ear to go. So I think I probably want it about there. So probably about there. What do you think? So I shall look at bonding that into place. Initially, I should just tack it in. So I'll just do a few, a few stabs, make sure I'm happy where it's going. Look at the front, make sure I'm happy that it's at roughly the position I want it to be. If it wasn't, you can just easily take it off. So it's quite a good idea to tack things on first. Just a few stabs, keeps it in place. Works out if you, that's where you're happy with it. Keep an eye on the front, make sure it's not going off center or it's not going down the back or you're not losing the ear. Sometimes it's easy for the ear to disappear down the back of the head or it might be going off at too much of an angle or something. Just keep an eye on it. I'll say even at this stage, if you discovered it was too much, you know, it was in the wrong position, you just pull it off, basically. This is the back of the head, you can see. These fibres are sort of making up the back of the head now, aren't they? So they were the fibres of the end of the ear, back of the ear, and then they're adding to the back of the head. There's no firm and fast rule with needle folding. You see, I might have, you might have noticed there, I was just stabbing the head a little bit more. I just thought, oh, it just looked like it needed a bit of a stab. <laughs> so I just put a few more stabs into the back of the head, or into the top of the head rather. So you can, you know, say it's quite flexible. Now I've got the ears on, the head feels as though it needs a bit of shape to it, because obviously I just made it as ball, didn't I? It's, but now I've got ears on, it looks like it needs a bit of shape. So I'm just sort of gradually using my finger to bring down the top of the forehead so that it becomes more of a face shape rather than a ball. And then once I've used my finger to bring it down, it's worth then just using your needle to stab it into place. I'm just going to lower the top of the head a little bit and bring it down so it's becoming more face-like. Sorry, my mat didn't half move around. <laughs> it was not too annoying here as it goes at different angles. <laughs> okay, so I think what we're going to do now is we're going to put the eyes on and then it'll start coming alive. So with the eyes, we just want a little bit of black wool. We just pull off a little bit of black wool, roll it between your fingers again, very gently. It's about the size you think you might want the eyes. And then offer it up to the wall and see if that's roughly the eye shape you want. I think I'm going to want nice big eyes on my piece. So I shall start stabbing that eye into piece. Now where you put your eyes on a piece can make a big difference as to how it looks. Obviously if you have our eyes very close together, it gives a different appearance of if you have your eyes far apart. Now baby animals tend to have their eyes far apart. It gives them that sort of cute look. And so I tend to make my pieces with their eyes sort of far apart. I'm not a realistic needle filter. I'm sort of more, I don't know, cartoony, quirky. You've seen the pieces I make. Um, you know, some people make realistic pieces and uh, I'm not one of those needle filters. Uh, my pieces are all quite, I don't know, characteristics, I guess, caricatures, uh, sort of stylized. So my mouse will be sort of a stylized mouse rather than an actually accurate mouse. Sometimes it's a good idea to, especially when you're doing faces, in the upside down as well, because your human eye is so good at recognizing faces, you can't always see what you're doing when it's the right way up. But if you look at upside down, it becomes more obvious whether the eye is in the right spot. Okay, so that's one eye. I'll do the same with the next eye. So again, a bit of that black wool. Pull it off, mold it. 
very gently between my fingers and then pop it on the piece. Now I'm just making sure I'm happy where the eyes are and I'm just moving the wall, make sure I'm happy with them. I ended up being a bit more central than I wanted. So I'm just going to squish out the wall a little bit more. Okay, there we go. We've got a little face with two eyes. Now if you ever looked at somebody, you'll notice that the light glints off people's eyes and it gives them a little bit of almost like white light in their eyes. And we're going to want to give these little characters a bit of white glint in their eyes. So if you just look at my eyes, you'll see that they're reflecting the lights in the room and the sun outside. So we're going to want to do the same with these little characters as well. So again, just get a little bit of the white wall. Don't need very much for this, just a small amount. That might even be a bit too much, but just pull off a little bit. You can always add more. And then make it into like almost a crescent moon shape. And then pop that. In the corner of the eye like this. Ready? I mean, to life a little bit, isn't it? So just that little bit of glint makes quite a bit of difference to the face, doesn't it? I do the same with the other eye, so I get a small amount of warm. Roll it gently between my fingers. Again, that might be a bit too much. So I'll just pull a little bit off. And I should put a little bit on this side of the eye. Now, it's really tempting to do this, which actually looks quite cute, make it look quite quirky. But Light doesn't really reflect like that. You would have to have light coming from those both angles like that to give the glint in the eye on both sides. So realistically, the glint should be probably on this side of the eye, and then the sun is like coming from that side to reflect the glint. I think I got my physics right. <laughs> Who knows? But anyway, if you look at someone's eyes, they don't tend to have glint on two different sides of the eyes. Again, we would just pop that into the eye like so, and it makes it come to life a bit more. Aha, see, it's already looking a bit more like a face now, isn't it? <laughs> to begin with, you think, oh my God, it looks nothing like a face, and then gradually it starts to look more face-like. And then what do mice have? They have big noses, don't they? Well, pointy noses, not really big. So I'll get some wool, more of the white wool, and we'll just start building up this little nose area. So I'll just get the wool again, I'm just rubbing it between my fingers again, and then I'll just pop some wool onto his nose area, and we'll just felt that in. And we'll get a little bit more. We'll just felt that in again. Now, you might just notice I'm just felting the bottom of the head here. I just noticed a bit of a ridge at the bottom of the head that I didn't like, so I'm just felting it. So it's not an exact science, this. So if I'm doing something, you think, oh, what's she doing? Don't worry too much. <laughs> so 
it's not really something that you can sort of say exactly what to do at any one time really even sometimes the same wool can act differently from one day to the next and it's because you know when you think about it wool was like fur of an animal and sometimes it comes with a bit of a residual memory as to where its curls used to be and sometimes you'll get a piece of wool that just doesn't want to go where you want it to go <laughs> it wants to you know it'll stay with a curl in it uh, and you have to sort of entice that curl out of that particular piece of wool. A little bit more, I'm just going to build up his nose. And I'm happy that it looks a little bit like a, a mouse's nose. Now mice tend to have little cheeks as well, don't they? So I'm going to put some cheeks on him. So I'm going to again white wool, just roll it into a ball, and I'm going to give him some little mousy cheeks. Now I'm not saying the nose is finished, I'm just going to give him some little cheeks for now. Add a little bit more because that cheek's pretty much almost disappeared, isn't it? So we'll add a little bit more on this side. It's very forgiving. You can just add more, take it away. That's what it's quite nice about it, really. working on the other cheek so I don't get him too lopsided I'm going to carry on with the cheeks so again, just doing the same process over again until I'm happy that the cheeks are beginning to look cheek like. We're getting away from the ball shape they originally made, aren't we? So he's now getting sort of cheeks and a nose at the bottom of the face here. That cheek's beginning to look quite nice there, isn't it? It's sort of standing up from the rest of the wall, whereas this one here just looks like it's blended in with the rest of the wall. So i just give that cheek a little bit more work on this side. I 
Oh, ha. Yes, the cheeks are beginning to look cheap like now, aren't they? Push that side. Shake the head a little bit. My nose is getting quite nose-like. Might still make him a little bit bigger, a little bit more pointy for a little pointed mouse's nose. A bit more wool, pop it on the end. Sometimes you just get different colours in the fibre a little bit, so just take them out if you do. I want the little nose to go up, hence I'm pulling the wool up when I felt as well. So I want his nose to be here. There we go. Looking more like a little mouse, isn't it, with the little cheeks and the little nose. I just want to blend the cheeks in a little bit more, so I'll just blend those in. A bit, like a bit of a ridge going on. And I might just give the little mouse a bit of a nose to see what he's going to look like with a little pink nose. So a little small bit of pink wool. And pop the pink nose on and see if we're happy with what he's going to look like there. I wanted his nose to sort of be up rather than down. And here you just want to be really careful so you don't really want to lose the pink wool here. You don't want to be stabbing the pink wool into the face because you know you, you don't want to lose the pink wool. You want the pink wool to stay on the surface. There's a little round nose. So you just want to use your needle really carefully to sort of just gently bond that pink wool into the white wool so it doesn't come off or anything. And again, just really tiny little jabs of the pink wool, just bond it so it becomes a bit firmer, so it's not too loose. Without losing all the pink wool into the white, because otherwise if you were too firm, it would just you would just lose all the pink wool, it would just disappear into the white. I'm just going to use my fingers to shape that nose a bit. So it's, uh, it's got more shape on one side than the other. So I'm just going to try and shape it a little bit more. So there's no firm and fast rule. So if your nose doesn't look like it needs this doing, don't do it. <laughs> it's as simple as that, you know, just uh, different techniques you can use. You don't have to use them by no means. If you're making one of these mice yourself and you think, oh, I don't think I need that, don't do it. You know, simple as that. It's entirely up to you. It's your make. Every piece of wool will act slightly differently whenever you make them. Even if you were to make two of these exactly the same, chances are they'd end up ever so slightly differently. You know, that's needle felting for you. It's very difficult to replicate exactly. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just getting a small amount of wool just to put over the top of the cheeks because I felt as though there's a bit of a ridge going on here with the cheeks. You might not be able to see it as much in the camera, but I certainly can. And I sort of think they look a bit like a ridge, so I want it to blend a bit nicer than that. So I'm just putting a little bit of wool over the top, which sort of blends the cheeks in with the rest of the face. And look at that again, Let's see if we're happy. This cheek's a bit higher than this cheek, so I'll add a little bit more to this side. And you can just tweak like this as, as long as you want, really. <laughs> So you can 
felt it down so all the fibers are lovely and uh, tidily put away if you wanted to so you can carry on felting until there's no sort of sticky out fibers now, i tend not to do that with my pieces i have to be honest because i tend to make animals and animals are furry so i tend to leave my fibers quite furry because i prefer it that way but everyone's different and it's entirely up to you some people just love that lovely smooth look you can achieve by felting all the fibers away it's entirely up to you it's your piece it's your imagination it's your world you do whatever you like you know that's what's wonderful with it Okay, and I'm just going to give this little mouse a little face. I'm going to give him a little smile, so I get a bit of black wool. And then just put this around the bottom of his nose and give him a cheeky smile. Again, you just want to do this gently. You don't want all the black wool to disappear into the white so that's a tricky bit really because if you're too firm all the black will disappear i'm a bit thick on one side than i am on the other so i'm just going to add a little bit more black wool oh it keeps attaching it <laughs> you keep losing it <laughs> uh to this side you can see that it's thick on that side and it's on this side so i'm just going to add a little bit more over this side wasn't quite enough Got some pink as well there. And then look at the mouth from all angles, make sure you're happy with it. then have a little look at your mouse make sure you have him all over and then you can just sort of tweak him bond the fibers in a bit more around the head bond the fibers more in on the ears if you want to at the back of the head i won't worry too much about the, back of the head because it's a tutorial but you can bond the fibers in, in the back of the head more just gonna put those ears so they're a bit more forward facing and then you can tweak you can spend ages tweaking as long as you want. <laughs> so you can carry on felting, you can carry on easing all these fibers in. Some people I read, they use, um, you know those machines you buy that defluff a jumper. If you get a jumper that goes really fluffy, you put like a machine over it and it fluff, defluffs it. Some people use those on their needle felting makes to get rid of some of the fluff. I've never used one, so I don't know what it's like. But you can do that. You could try that if you wanted to. Some people will cut up all the loose fibers with little pair of scissors to get rid of all these loose fibers that you see on a piece to make it really neat uh i don't I say i don't do any of that my pieces are usually animals and i don't mind them looking fluffy i think it's quite nice and it sort of shows that it was wool it was made from but it depends what you're making and it's a say personal choice entirely personal choice that's so one so wonderful with it but you just do whatever you want it's your world you do whatever you like I just want my ears to have a bit more shape. They've lost the shape I gave them earlier, so I'm just going to have them have a little bit more shape around the edges. And so they bend over a little bit on the top. Just tice them. I'm just felting. I don't want to push the pink in too far, so I'm just felting around the pink. Give a bit of shape to the white bit above the pink there. So again, I'm just felting around where the pink is. It should then give a bit of shape to the white above and around the pink. And now I am just tweaking, faffing, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, really. <laughs> Which you can do for hours. But for the sake of the video, I'm going to call this little mouse done. You see, I don't know quite how long this took. Probably about an hour-ish. <laughs> it's not a quick process. Don't think you're going to whip something up in five minutes. 
and here I have, I've made a little mask. Now I tend to felt quite firmly. I know some people felt very loosely, but my pieces are quite firm. So if I try and squeeze this in the camera so you can see, very firm, you know, that's me, that's just me, my total pressure. This is hard I can squeeze. See, so it doesn't really squeeze down very far. So that's total firmness. Um, some people would felt very loosely, but personally I find that if you felt too loosely, the animals start to lose their structures after a certain amount of time. They don't stay firm. And I quite like my pieces to stay firm. So I do felt quite firmly. So I'm saying this is put total, this is as much power as I can put into it. And that's as far as it goes. It's getting quite firm. It's heading on towards the firmness of a tennis ball. So everyone felt slightly differently. And my firmness is probably, you know, tennis balls have got a little bit of give, but not too much give. It's a bit like a tennis ball. It's not quite as firm as a tennis ball because they're quite hard to squeeze, aren't they? But it's heading on to that way. So I'm going to call this little match done. Now what I'm going to do is, well, I'm going to get a little bit of ribbon, put through his head, and then we can hang him up and he'd be a bit of an ornament. So, and I've got some ribbon here. I thought would go quite nice. And it's shiny and sparkly. And I am a magpie. <laughs> I'll get my little pair of scissors. Have a little think about how much ribbon I need, roughly. So if I cut it off about there, that's more than enough. And what I should do is I should just put a little, a little stitch through that and hang that onto his head. I've got some gold sewing needles, I think that's what they're called. And they're really nice and long. I mean, they're designed to go through things. Absolutely brilliant design. I didn't have these for years and it made life so much harder. You can go through really large items with these. That's a bit overkill for what I'm doing today, but I'll still use the big one because I prefer it. <laughs> and I've got some pink thread here, which I should cut off. And then I should use that. Oh, there's my scissors. I couldn't find them in it. To put the stitch at the bottom of the head and I'll go through and then just put the ribbon onto the top of his head. I know I could probably stitch onto the top of the head but it's quite difficult to get thread to stay on wool because obviously wool isn't that firm. It's not like fabric that's tightly woven together. You know, if you try and put a stitch into wool, it sort of comes loose. But if you sort of tie a knot in the bottom of your thread, which is what I'm trying to do here, <laughs> my old fingers and thumbs. <laughs> I'm trying to tie quite a large knot there. There we go. And I'm going to use my big flowers needle. Thread that up. And then I should come up to the bottom of his head. And he's going, ow, 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 what are you doing to me, woman? <laughs> up to the top of the head. That knot should stop it from going all the way through. And then I can attach the ribbon onto the top of the head. And then get the other end of the ribbon. Might be a fraction long, so I'll just cut a little bit of the ribbon off. I don't think it needs to be quite that long. Ooh. Sorry, I'm trying to. I would normally have to get closer to see what I'm doing with my glasses. But I try not to do that because you won't be able to see anything I'm doing if I do that. So, um, I look a little bit clumsy what I'm doing, but it's uh, I can't quite see what I'm doing properly. My glasses are ideal for this type, for this uh, distance, to be honest. Oh, my needles keeps unthreading itself because it's too big. And then I'll just go back through that ribbon, and try to come out to the bottom of the head, roughly where I went in. I'll thread my needle and pull it up to the bottom of his head. There you go, the thread holds that in place on the top of his head. 
and then the threads are at the bottom. And then I can bring out the knot that I originally did and tie another knot at the bottom of the head, which will keep that nice and firmly and in place. It's ideal if you need to attach like bead eyes or something to use this idea. You can put the knot at the back of the head and then go through to attach the bead eyes, which is ideal. Sorry if I look a little bit clumsy. So yeah, ideally, I need to be getting closer than this to do this. I'll try not to do that because you won't be able to see anything because my head will be in the way. <laughs> and there we go. We've attached a little bit of a ribbon to the top of his head. And you can then use just a small amount of white wool to cover over that thread that we can see at the bottom of his head. I'm just using little scraps of white wool that I've left over on my mat to just cover up that pink thread that was at the bottom of his face. And there you go, we've now got the ribbon attached to the top of his head and we can now hang him up like an ornament. Now funny enough, I actually made one of these last week, but I forgot <laughs> to video in the second half of the video. <laughs> I changed the battery on one of the cameras. I forgot to reset it to, to film. <laughs> so this is the one I made last week. It's a little bit smaller, um, but I couldn't do the video of that one because I didn't set the camera rolling. <laughs> and then this is the one I've made this week. So we've now got two little mice that I made for this. So I'm not gonna make the bodies because say, you know, it's, it's already about an hour or so this video, isn't it? So it takes about an hour to make a face like this. If you wanted to make a body, you would get your wool and you would make it either to a circle or an oblong shape and then stab it exactly like the same way as we made the head and then you could attach the arms and the leg. So I've done a video on how to make an Easter Bunny and that's got arms and legs on him too. So you would do that same sort of process as I'm using on the Easter Bunny one to make the arms and legs for a mouse and then a nice long tail at the back. But for this video, because I don't want it to be too long, I'm just going to call him done, little face, my little mouse head I guess. <laughs> little ornament and the one I made last week that I forgot to video properly <laughs> and I'm going to call them done. And I hope you found that interesting and I hope it's helped you on your needle felting journey. So if you're struggling to get started hopefully it might have helped you understand how you can make a circle and then you can make some ears then you can add a nose and some eyes and what have you. So if you get stuck and you've got any questions just pop them below. I'm more than happy to answer any questions you might have. Or if you've just got any comments, just pop them below. I love hearing from everybody. It's just a wonderful community. So thanks everyone for following and subscribing and commenting. It's wonderful. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see what I'm up to next and see how I'm getting on with my other projects. And thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.